Hey guys, my name is Kathleen, former PCT thru-hiker, avid Pacific Northwest day hiker, and the hungry hiker here on YouTube. Recently, I got a really awesome comment on one of my videos from one of you guys, and it says, I'd love to see a Q&A video and hear about your potential future long-term hiking plans. Any additional thru-hikes in your future, and are you still dating the person you met on the PCT? And then I got to thinking, wow, have I finally reached that status on YouTube where people want to ask me questions and learn more about me than what I show in my videos? I mean, some of you have already recognized me and said hello to me on trail, which is super cool. And I love even more when you tell me that you watch my videos and they've inspired you to want to go hiking or plan backpacking trips of your own. The whole reason why I created the Hungry Hiker YouTube channel is because I wanted to share my adventures with other people in hopes of inspiring other people to want to go outdoors and have adventures of their own. And if you ever see me on trail, give me a high five and say hello. I just don't think I'm ever going to get used to the fact that there are more people out there that watch my videos and just my mom. Thanks mom for watching my videos. Your mom is always your number one fan. This comment inspired me to put together my very first Q&A video here on YouTube. I recently put a call out on my community tab on my YouTube channel asking you guys if I were to put together a Q&A video, what questions would you have for me? And boy, did you guys have a bunch of questions. I mean, a ton of questions. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to get notified anytime I add a new video. I'm going to start with the first question that inspired this whole video in the first place. And that is, I'd love to see a Q&A video and hear about your potential future long-term hiking plans. Any additional through hikes in your future? And are you still dating the person you met on the PCT? So thank you for your question. I just want to answer first the second part of the question. Am I still dating the person I met on the PCT? So the person I met on the PCT that I think this person was referring to is Belize. Bleeder. Bleeder was in my trail family on my PCT hike in 2018 and we came back in 2019 to hike the PCT again. Bleeder lives in Sweden. We knew he was going to be going back home to Sweden and so I didn't want to do a long distance relationship. He didn't want to do a long distance relationship. To answer that question, no, we are um, no longer dating. We're still friends and a lot of you also asked if I was single. Yeah. I'm single, so I hope that answers your question. To answer the other part of this question, a lot of you wanted to know what hikes I had planned coming up, and I'm super excited. This is my official announcement for all of my trips this season, and so you're hearing it here first. I've got a couple more trips planned over in the Olympic National Park. This is my first year actually exploring over in Olympic National Park, so I've gone on two different trips so far. I'll include links to those videos up here. You can check them out if you haven't seen them already. I also have a trip planned over in North Cascades National Park to the Sahali Glacier, which I'm very excited about. Any time that I can spend time in the North Cascades National Park is awesome. I love that part of Washington. The, those mountains are just so magical and mwah, they're just beautiful. So I'm really excited for that trip. And then I have a very, very big through hike planned this summer. I'm going to be Drum roll, please. I'm gonna be through hiking the entire Wonderland Trail, which goes around the base of Mount Rainier for 93 miles. I am so excited. This is a huge bucket list hike for me. This one's a hard one to plan because in order to camp along the Wonderland Trail, you do have to have a backcountry permit. And to get those permits, you either have to enter the lottery, which happens the beginning of the year, so February or March. This year with the, the Wonderland water lottery, how it works was you enter in the lottery and then the lottery winners were assigned an early reservation time slot. Lot. So basically you got a date and a time that you could log into the system and build your itinerary. I must have had a lot of really good karma in the karma bank because my date time slot to put together my itinerary for the lottery. So not only did I win the lottery, but my time slot for the lottery was the second day that the early reservations had opened. I basically built my dream itinerary for this trip. 
which is why it's a bucket list trip for me. So we're gonna be out there for 10 days, 10 days. We're gonna do the entire trail and I'm super excited. I'm going with three other of my friends. So if you guys checked out my Northern Loop hike off of the Wonderland Trail in Rainier, so I'll include a link up here above, you'll remember Clarkia and Raquel. They are gonna be joining me for the Wonderland trip this year. The other friend who I'm bringing along is my best friend Katie and we've been best friends since high school. I'm super, super excited to be out there with these amazing women for 10 days in some beautiful backcountry and I'm just really hoping we get really nice weather and that we just get blessed with seeing Mount Rainier every single day that we're out there. So I'm really excited for that trip. Another big trip that I have planned this year is I'm going to be getting back on the PCT. So if you guys remember last year, I did a section hike, section L along the PCT. I'll link the playlist for those vlogs from that trip up here for you to check out. This year, I'm hopping back on the PCT here in Washington and I'm going to be doing the entire section Section K along the PCT. So I'm going to be hiking southbound. So Section K, I'll be starting from Rainy Pass and I'll be hiking down to Stevens Pass, all 127 miles one way. And that'll be a solo trip and I'm really excited. Section K is probably one of the most challenging sections of the PCT here in Washington just because it's so incredibly remote. There's nowhere along the section that I'll be resupplying. So I'll be carrying all of my food with me on this trip. I'll be out there for nine days I believe so I'll have a 10-day food carry because I always carry an extra day's worth of food and for all these big trips I'll be making a gear video a food video and I'll be vlogging the entire trip so I'll be sure to take you with me and then of course I have my annual trip to the Grand Canyon this year's gonna look a little bit different I'm not giving away too many details but just know there's another Grand Canyon trip being prepared right now we're switching up this year and I'm really excited and then of course sprinkled in with all those big trips. I've got my day hikes and weekend backpacking trips that I'll be doing up here in the Pacific Northwest. So stay tuned. Lots of super fun adventures coming your way and I'll be sure to bring you with me. Another popular question I got was about how I got started with hiking. Why and when did you decide to start hiking? I did not grow up hiking. My first day hike ever and it was Half Dome in Yosemite. The hike to Half Dome is a 17 mile hike round trip. When I did this hike, you know, this was my first day hike ever. I didn't have any hiking gear. I didn't have hiking shoes. I didn't have a proper hiking backpack. I used my backpack from high school, which was a Jansport backpack. I went with the guidance of a friend who sold me on this trip to Yosemite and all he said was, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna go camping in Yosemite and then we're gonna do this, um, you know, just this little 17 mile hike up Half Dome. And at the time, I didn't know what Half Dome was. And this is before you needed a permit to hike Half Dome. Now, because Yosemite and Half Dome is so popular that you do have to have a permit to day hike up there. And there is a ranger that checks at the saddle for permits. So just to give you an idea of like how long ago this story was. My first hike was interesting. So Half Dome itself was incredible. It was beautiful. I mean, the views up there were just amazing. It just obviously it inspired me to want to continue hiking, but everything that could go wrong on this hike went wrong. So I ran out of food. I ran out of water, came back after dark. We didn't have headlamps. I mean, it, we were just, we were not prepared. My friend did not fully prepare us for this trip the way that we should have been prepared. So I learned a lot on this trip and I hope that inspires you guys to know that nobody knows it all when you first start hiking, right? Like it's impossible. Like the only way to learn how to hike and to backpack is to, to go hiking and to go backpacking and to make those mistakes. And hopefully you don't make the mistakes that I made because I mean, we were really on the cusp of like needing help from like a ranger, but luckily we made it back. There was no injuries. Everybody was fine. But ever since then, I've been very prepared for my hikes. That's how I got started with hiking. How do you find the time to hike so much? Valid question. If you're just watching my YouTube videos or following me on Instagram and you don't know me offline, it might appear that I go hiking quite a bit 
maybe even every day. And that's just not the reality. I wish I could go hiking every day, but my reality is that I do have a job and I do have to work throughout the week. And so I just make the time. The only way you're gonna make something happen is if you put it on the calendar. And I tell all my friends, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. So I calendar my hikes and I, I make the time and I go. For me, hiking and backpacking, especially in the summer up here in the Pacific Northwest, is a priority. In the beginning of the year, I plot out and plan my big backpacking trips for the year and put them on the calendar so they absolutely happen. So it might look like I hike a lot, which I do, but I make the time to do so. What was your scariest moment on trail? Every single water crossing that I had to do in the Sierra. <laughs> When I hiked the PCT in 2018, I went back into the Sierra up through Kearsarge Pass by myself. My whole trail family that I had hiked the first 700 miles with, everybody went home. Up until that point, I had never really had any experience with big water crossings and water crossings are no joke. I think it was the water crossings that I started to talk out loud to myself on trail. So I do a fair amount of solo hiking and backpacking, which I love. and water crossings are something that really brings out the anxiety in me. A, a calming mechanism that I found that works for me is I talk out loud to myself. So when I'm really, really scared, I talk myself through it. And sometimes I think that I'm having that conversation in my head and most of the time I'm talking out loud. And whatever, I don't care if someone comes up behind me and, and thinks I'm a crazy person. If it helps me make it through the situation without being injured or killing myself, then it's successful and I will continue to talk out loud to myself when I'm really scared on trail. Why does the Mount Whitney sticker on your bear canister say never again on it? I get asked this question a lot. Pretty much any time that I post a picture of my bear canister, people ask me, why does it say never again? So on my bear canister, I have a sticker of Mount Whitney and then with a Sharpie I wrote, never again on top of the sticker. In 2018, on my through hike along the PCT, we took the alternate trip to go up to Mount Whitney. Now, most PCT through hikers will go up to Mount Whitney and they'll go back to the PCT. My trail family did not do that. We went up to Mount Whitney and then came down from Mount Whitney going down the Whitney portal, which has 99 switchbacks. It was a very long day. I had two really big breakdowns on that day. So my first breakdown was when we got to the top of Mount Whitney. I was just exhausted. I was hungry. I was tired. I think the elevation was getting to me. Coming down the portal, I thought we had to have been at least halfway down. And when I realized I think we were only two miles into going down the portal, I broke down. I just, I just started sobbing. I'm like, oh my God, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I was tired. I was hungry because we knew we were having a big day like we didn't take a lot of breaks I didn't eat nearly as much food as I should have it was just a very difficult day for me and I had three really really difficult days on the PCT in 2018 that was probably the number one hardest day spoiler I made it down in one piece I'm alive and the only thing that helped get me down off of that godforsaken trail that day was bleeder reminding me that we were gonna have McDonald's for dinner and for all those people who who food shame McDonald's McDonald's saved my life because I was able to meal plan at that point bleeder had reminded me that we were gonna be going down into Lone Pine and that we were gonna have McDonald's for dinner and he started asking me what I was gonna order and it helped me stop crying and it really helped me focus on getting off of that mountain so thank you McDonald's thank you bleeder and I will never hike Mount Whitney again what percent of the time do you hike by yourself versus going going with the group. Also, do you ever pick up hitchhikers now that you've hitched? And if all the gummy bears in the world disappeared, what would be your backup candy? So let me start with the first part of this question. What percent of the time do you hike by yourself versus going with a group? I'd say I'd go 80% of the time by myself and 20% of the time with a group. I do a lot of day hikes, training hikes by myself, and I'm super okay with that. I mean, I do a ton of backpacking trips by myself. I'm doing Section K this year by myself. Myself. But I've also been backpacking with a lot of groups this year. So this year, my two backpacking trips that I've gone on so far in the Olympics have been with the Mountaineers. And if you are in the Western Washington area, I highly recommend looking up the Mountaineers. They are a local nonprofit organization. Their whole mission is to help educate people to get outside and just in 
enjoy the outdoors responsibly and safely. And if you're someone who is looking to go hiking and backpacking and you don't want to do it by yourself, the Mountaineers is a great organization to get involved with because they offer a lot of trips that are led by volunteers and it's a great chance for you to meet like-minded people. So definitely check out the Mountaineers. I'll be sure to include a link below in the video description for you to check them out. Also, do you ever pick up hitchhikers now that you've hitched? So I won't just pick up anyone that's hitching on the road and that's more of a safety issue but if I'm going somewhere near the PCT so if I'm going near Snoqualmie Pass or Stevens Pass or even up at Rainy Pass and I see someone that looks like a through hiker I'll roll up to him and I'll ask him you hike in the PCT and if they say yes I'll ask him where do they need to go and I will in a heartbeat give a PCT through hiker a ride anywhere even if it's out of my way and I actually have a PCT sticker on my car and that is not only to show my support for the trail, but I want through hikers to know that when they see that sticker that that car will stop and help them. So yes, I do pick up hitchhikers, but I pick up through hikers. And if all the gummy bears in the world disappeared, what would be your backup candy? My all time favorite candy is actually chocolate covered almonds especially if they're dark chocolate. If there were no gummy bears left in the entire world, and that would be a very sad world, it would have to be chocolate covered almonds. A lot of people wanna ask me if I carry bear spray, if I carry a weapon for protection, am I scared of animals, am I scared of people on trail? I do carry a knife, and a knife is one of the 10 essentials, so I always have a knife with me anytime that I'm out on trail, whether it's a day hike or a backpacking trip, but I don't necessarily carry it to use it as a weapon. You can start a fire with a knife, you can cut cheese with a knife, you can open packages with a knife. I have my knife, but I don't consider it a weapon. And no, I don't carry bear spray. I had no idea that bear spray would be such a controversial topic on my YouTube channel. I see it pop up a lot in comments on my videos and I don't. I don't carry bear spray and that is by choice. I don't hike through grizzly country here in the Pacific Northwest. We do have bears. They're black bears. I'm not saying that there's no risk with hiking when there's bears around. There's absolutely risk with bears, but you just want to be bear aware. Making noise, make sure the bears know that you're there. There's a bear canister requirement in the area that you're traveling in. You definitely want to abide by that and keep all your food and scented items in your bear canister or hang your food. You know, you don't want to approach a bear. Don't look a bear in the eye. You can definitely share the outdoor space with bears without being afraid. Now, if I were hiking the CDT and I was going through grizzly country, yes, I would absolutely carry bear spray. The wonderful thing about hiking and backpacking is there's no one right way to do things. As different as we all are is going to be as different as the gear that we all carry on trail with us or the gear that we don't carry. If you are someone that you feel like bear spray is important to you, bring it with you. But for me, I don't carry it and I'm totally fine with that. Am I afraid of people on trail? No. I have never ran into a situation where I had like weird vibes from someone. I mean, I've met people that I don't like on trail, but I feel more safe out on trail than I do going into the city, if that makes any sense. What is your favorite thing about living in Washington? Besides my friends and family, I would have to say the backcountry. It is so beautiful here in Washington. The mountains, the alpine lakes. I'm just really thankful and grateful that I live in such a beautiful state. And Washington just has a little bit of everything. And if you want a drier, warmer client, you can just go over to Eastern Washington and get that warm weather. How did you get started on YouTube? And are you able to do this full time? The concept for The Hungry Hiker was actually created on the PCT in 2018. In 2018, when I was hiking up here in Washington, I literally, had a conversation with the trail one day and I just asked the trail, if I were to make a YouTube channel, what would I make videos about? Because I knew I wanted to make a YouTube channel. I just didn't know what videos I wanted to create. I knew I loved hiking. I knew I was hungry all the time. I know that I love eating food while I'm hiking and backpacking. So within two miles of me starting that conversation with the trail, I had the concept for the hungry hiker, which is me. I'm a hiker and I'm always hungry. I decided when I got off trail in 2018 that I was gonna make some videos and invested in 
in this little project of mine and I got a Canon G7X camera and I started shooting videos and then editing my videos and when I got off trail in 2018 I knew I was going to get back on trail in 2019 for another through hike on the PCT so I had six months in between my hikes and that's when I started making videos not only about hiking but also how I was preparing for that upcoming through hike and now here we are I'm still making hiking videos and backpacking videos and food videos but my channel is just a little bit bigger I have more people watching my videos these days which is really awesome and a fun fact that you might not know about me I have my college degree I graduated from San Jose State University and I have my degree in radio TV video film so I essentially have a film degree now here I am making videos for YouTube about hiking which is super awesome it's a lot of fun I love that my videos inspire other people out there to want to get outside for adventures of their own which is the whole reason why I wanted to create this channel in the first place am I able to do this full-time not quite I definitely I mean I feel like the work that I put into the channel is full-time you know everything from shooting videos to editing videos to responding to comments on my videos to posting photos on Instagram to promote my videos it feels like a full-time job my videos are monetized so I do get some money from my videos when people watch the ads on my videos it's a pretty decent chunk of change but it's nothing that I could actually live off of full-time my ultimate goal is to get paid to hiking so maybe one day I'll be able to do this full-time and when I'm able to do this full-time I'll be able to make more videos and create more content for you to enjoy but right now it's just super fun to be able to document my big trips and to share with you the gear that I use on trail and also to share with you the food that I bring on trail and my favorite backpacking food recipes and that's it for my first Q&A video here on YouTube if you like this style of video if you liked me going through and answering your questions you want to see more Q&A videos like this in the future go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or leave me some comments below let me know what you liked about this style of video maybe you want me to do these videos once a month or before or after my big trips and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video happy trails and keep on trucking